Hello, I'm Jim Koval and I'm the Senior Manager of Guest Experience here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. When you live next to the ocean and you see it every day, the ocean is always top of mind. But for a lot of people that live inland, out of sight of the ocean, maybe thousands of miles from the ocean, you may think, well, I don't really have any impact on the ocean and it doesn't have much bearing on my life. And that's really not true at all. I think we all need to realize that the ocean starts on your rooftop or in your backyard or at the sink in your house, that we all use water and that water has to go someplace and the ocean ultimately is downstream from all of us. One of the challenges that ocean scientists have is that it's more difficult to observe changes and different phenomena underwater, like changes in animal distribution or reductions in the number of large fishes out there. The oceans are big and, and it's hard for us to see. And yet, scientists have more and more tools to observe changes in the ocean. The future of the oceans is kind of at a crossroads right now. Scientists are telling us that we are making some big changes in the oceans. And if we continue down that particular path of making more and more changes in the oceans, the future picture is a little bit gloomy. The scientific evidence has been piling up very quickly that we're creating some large-scale changes, whether it's uh, increasing acidification of the oceans, warming of the oceans, changes in sea level. Although we're talking a matter of inches, those inches make a big difference perhaps when you've got a storm surge coming in ahead of a hurricane or some major event. And we suspect that much of what's going on is related to overall climate change. We're starting to see lots and lots of glacial melt coming off of large ice caps. That's adding to the ocean. As the ocean water becomes more acidic, that has a real impact on animals that form shells, uh, any animal that uses calcium in its system. Those animals are having a much more difficult time. And when you think about all the animals you like to eat in the ocean, a lot of our favorite seafood are things that live in shells and their life is gonna become much more difficult with increasing ocean acidification. The good news is, is that we know pretty much what causes that increasing acidification. It's really a lot of carbon dioxide that is going in the atmosphere, some of which dissolves into the seawater and makes that seawater more acidic. We humans are the source of a lot of that carbon dioxide, pretty much by burning stuff. If we can change how we make our energy or use energy more efficiently, that equates immediately to a reduction in the amount of CO2 going into the ocean. So we have some real advantages working in our favor. First of all, in terms of learning about current ocean science, there are more and more institutions and it all starts with knowing more and also with doing things like this, with having conversations about what's going on in the ocean. So we are all more aware of it and what we think of it. My recommendation, if you want to do one thing to help the oceans, in addition to just learning more, is every time you use some energy, drive somewhere in your car, flip a light switch to be very careful about using energy and not use any more than we need to. In terms of changing how we utilize ocean resources, everything from fishing to harvesting minerals to harvesting uh, oil beneath the ocean surface, there's lots of ways that we interact with the ocean. Each one of those ways is a choice. I really choose to believe that we humans care about the oceans and if we make good choices, we can have a very happy future with a very healthy ocean.